AFX series is compact all-in-one hyperspectral solution for drone use and we now have available AFX10 and AFX17. AFX10 is VNR and the AFX17 is NIR. So what we have inside the single casing is either FX10 or 17 spectral camera, small computer mu GPU, and then we are using Trimble ABX15 um, survey crate high performance GNSS IMU. And then we'll include also our system control board, a miniaturized version of that for timestamping between the image and navigation data. The camera size is similar for both AFX10 and AFX17. They both weigh less than um, 2.5 kilos. So what about the features for Specim AFX? We are providing the all-in-one hyperspectral imaging solution in a single casis, which makes it easy to mount either with or without the gimbal. We have multiple spectral region of interest capability uh, for both hyperspectral and application specific multispectral configuration usage. Like with all of our airborne systems, the AFX series comes with a fully characterized lens calibration, which models the apparitions for the lens. So we have the calibrated field of view and location for each pixel within the field of view and provide that data as a vector which can be used during the post processing for accurate georeferencing together with the high accuracy um, uh, GNSS IMU data. We also have an ability to collect more light thanks to larger aperture of the system but we still have significantly less smile and keystone compared to competing solutions. So what are the benefits of the Specim AFX series? Because it's small and compact, it's, it's easier to mount that uh, for different drones and you have more selection available. Since we, it's, we have only one casing, it's very fast and straightforward for mounting and only minimal cabling is required. The AFX series offers us a more compact solution in our high-end product range. And as mentioned earlier, we have a large numerical aperture which allows the efficient collection of light. Sometimes that means more apertures um, in the image. However, we have the image enhancement algorithm inside the camera which reduces any aberrations and the combination of large aperture and the correction um, algorithm results in high quality data. We have an ability to reduce the, uh, the amount of data by using the multiple region of interest feature and the focus on relevant spectral areas. Data acquisition on AFX series is fully automized and uh, it's following the flight plan, so there's no need to control the Specim AFX during the flight. We simply set the camera parameters and upload the flight plan before uh, the uh, takeoff, and after that, the system acquires the data uh, automatically when the drone flies according to the flight plan. We do get accurate georeferencing thanks to our high performance GNSS IMU solution. And since the IMU and camera are within the same casts, um, even if we have to dismount and remount the sensor, there's no need for a new boreside calibrate. And should you have both sensors, AFX10 and AFX17, it's very easy to swap between them in a mounting since they have the same form factor and size. On this slide, I have the side-by-side -side comparison of AFX10 and AFX17. The spectral range is naturally different because uh, one is Wiener and the second one is NIR. They can both acquire up to 224 bands of course, the spectral sampling and resolution are slightly different because of the different spectral range. 
The number of spatial pixels for the Venery is 1024 and for the NIR 640 pixels. The field of view for both cameras is the, is the same 38 degrees. The numerical aperture is large 1.7. We can acquire data even with the full high spectral con configuration at rates of several hundred frames per second. However, typically with the airborne drone applications, the frame range are ranging from 50 to 100 frames per second. The dimensions of both cameras are identical. They both weigh less than 2.5 kilos. Um, the accurate weights become available when we have the first units from production. Um, there is a small difference in weight. The AFX10 will be probably 1 to 200 grams lighter than the AFX17, but both are definitely less than 2.5. Um, in an AFX camera, uh, the FX10 or FX17 is connected to small mu TPU computer, which acquires the data on the SSD drive. The camera is triggered by the system control board, and the system control board gets the navigation data and the pulse per second information from the GNSS IMU, and timestamps the image data to navigation data. So this information can be used automatically during the georeferencing uh, post process. So it's a large benefit. Then a slide about the uh, crown sampling versus height. Uh, the uh, local uh, regulations and uh, limitations on using the drones vary from one part to another. For example, in Europe, uh, the maximum uh, height you can use for flying the drones is 120 meters, and the same um, 120 meters or 400 feet is currently set in uh, USA as well, unless there are some um, exceptions on, on usage of the drones. So always pay attention what are the local regulations. Um, on this table, I have illustrated uh, the uh, different crown sampling distances as a function of height. So when you fly at 50 meters, your crown sampling distance on AFX-10 is 3.5 centimeters and AFX-17 5.5 centimeters when using spatial binning by one. If you bin by two, your crown sampling distances will be doubled. And when you fly higher, depending on the altitude, your um, GSD values are from 7 to 33 uh, centimeters. So it's uh, the GSD is changing linearly as a function of height. We always provide a spreadsheet for calculation these values accurately for each system. Then the MROI multiple region of interest. So the MROI reduces amount of spectral data. For industrial FX cameras, the main motivation is to reach higher frame rates. But for AFX cameras and airborne systems, the main motivation is to reduce amount of data from hyperspectral to multispectral for specialized applications. On the left, you can see the full hyperspectral data with uh, MROI, you can define the multispectral band configuration uh, specifying any number of bands, band locations, and band widths. And then only those active bands are acquired in your data cube. 